So we have Mayan from Delhi, who's an independent filmmaker, amazing. Mumbai was a photographer, I think, going in for filmmaking now, which is again really, really brilliant, brilliant move because you need to know all the uh, things that are happening in the world. Uh, then we have Deepak uh, from Bangalore. We have Naveen from Raipur, amazing. Uh, and, it's, and it's amazing to have so many people from different parts of a country. And that is why I really, from that, I have uh, like been able to create with the help of you guys that uh, this platform, which allows me to be connected with so many like-minded people in the industry that it's just amazing to be here with all of you. Then again, welcome guys, welcome to this session where we will actually be talking about a cinematic lighting. We will be talking about how light really works when it comes to cinema uh, and how, how it affects your video quality. What are the different kinds of lights? What are the different things you need to consider when you are actually uh, shooting and how do you really manage uh, lighting and light setups? I will also give you uh, the uh, suggestions based on light setups and one very interesting thing that we are actually going to be doing today is that this uh, session this uh, special workshop will allow you to uh, come and join us on a shoot if uh, you have the capability to come and join us in our city, we will uh, start our shoot starting August. Uh, we are uh, actually getting into production for a lot of things this August. Uh, and uh, But in case, let's say, you can't really come to our city for any uh, reason possible, don't worry about it. We will uh, plan a shoot in your city. Uh, we may be doing a music video or we may be doing a short film or whatever we can. And we will hold... Uh, a shoot in your city and we will get you on that shoot with us no questions asked this is a collaborative session and this is a session where we want to get in touch with you to kind of build a community that kind of supports each other and uh, works together so i hope the screen is uh, visible to you and you can see the presentation if you can just uh, put a yes in the chat box Kushal is from Coimbatore. Amazing. Uh, I really want to come to Coimbatore. Uh, I've, I've seen pictures and I have uh, seen what it looks like. I really want to do that. Uh, we have people from Gujarat. We have people uh, from Surat. We have people from uh, uh, Gurgaon also. Arin, amazing. Uh, we are based out of Gurgaon and uh, you can actually uh, get in touch with us. Uh, anybody who's from Delhi NCR, the biggest uh, capability you, or the ability you have is to join us for the shoots as soon as we start. And guys, there is no extra charge. Uh, the only expenses you will have to bear is the expense of coming and going back. Lunch will be on us and uh, we feed our uh, guests uh, very well. Sarvagya, if you have a question, uh, then raise your hand. Uh, guys, raise your hand if you have a question. Uh, it is better you type it out because then it stays there for a longer time. Uh, but in case uh, you can't type it out and it's urgent, just write urgent in the chat box. I will unmute you and we will take that question. But uh, wait for things to happen. Wait for things to unfold and uh, wait for things to kind of reveal themselves during the uh, workshop. And I hope English is a language that is comfortable with everybody. Or do you guys want to uh, want me to speak in Hindi? Uh, are there only Hindi speaking people here? Uh, agar aap chate, main sirf Hindi mein baat karu, main Hindi bhi bol sakta hu. Main kharab, uh, French or Spanish samaj bhi sakta hu. Uh, magar uske ilawa, uh, Hindi or English zada comfortable hai, aur Hindi English mein baat karna uh, is easier for me. So uh, if English is okay, just say, say yes uh, if you want me to uh, go purely into hindi and uh, if anybody else has a problem with hindi uh, just say english uh, and i will stick to english or let's have a mix of both my beach beach hindi bhi bolta rahunga i can work with that thanks jaspreet thank you so much Uh, guys, let's make this more interactive. I know uh, it's a it's a Saturday evening, and you might be planning to have a couple of uh, drinks post this session, and you're already partying in your head. Uh, I know we're not going out anywhere, but uh, the party happens at home. So uh, 
and we're kind of getting used to partying at home uh, considering it's been five months of lockdown uh before i go ahead what have you been doing in this lockdown that would actually add value to what you are planning to do in the future guys please answer this question what have you been doing in this lockdown that will add value what you are planning to do in the future anybody and guys feel free to uh, this somebody saying you making short film using for my and amazing please share links i would love to see what you've been doing uh, and guys uh, if you and i have been connecting on uh, whatsapp or have been connecting on uh, instagram and if i talk to you as like a stranger please please don't mind it because i'm very very bad with names until unless names names are uh, very unique i'm actually very very bad with names so you can actually remind me because i talk to like about 100 people a day so it sometimes gets very hard for me to remember names but yes if you remind me what we were talking about i will definitely be able to pick up a conversation from there so we are people who are learning about editing and cinematography there are people who are learning about photography enhancing their skills uh, uh learning a lot of theory yes because we are learning online and we are learning through these webinars we are learning through uh, edu different education formats uh, we are actually learning a lot and that is what we also try and aim at is uh, really uh, building a community that teaches you uh, how many of you guys have not yet installed the app and why i'm asking this i'm not pro self promoting the app but because this webinar the recording will be available to you for 2 weeks post this webinar and of course unlimited time for the inner circle members on the app the recording and all the content the presentation everything will be available to you on the app uh, i'm putting the link in here again if you've not actually uh, installed the app please 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 do so i don't want you guys to be missing out on anything uh, that is happening uh, on the app and a lot of action happens on the app we put up a lot of courses there we put up a lot of things that uh, we uh, share with our users there are cheat sheets there are free webinars and everything that goes on the shoot guru app it is available on android and on ios so let's begin it is 6:18 and we have a lot to cover so going ahead uh, we have all the participants in and uh, i think everybody is geared up uh, make notes if you want but this recording will be available to you so i always uh, prefer people to listen to me more ask questions guys there is no such thing as a wrong question or a stupid question it could be something even your other uh, participants in this uh, 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 workshop would be looking at or would be considering to do so please 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 feel free to ask these questions feel uh, feel free to ask whatever you want and that could actually add value to everybody in the webinar as well first thing first why do we need light as a filmmaker everything works on light that is what the technology is about that is what everything is about the whole funda or the whole mathematics of photography and film making is that everything runs on light that is what your camera sensors are capturing when the uh, films were uh, developed when film making uh, started when photography started it was all the film that was being exposed to light and the imprint of that light would come onto that film or the sensor in today's day and age and you would get an image what is called exposing hence at that point in time uh when you would be a photographer or when you would be somebody who is uh, into photography or film making you would actually call it exposing exposing shots for in terms of photography and exposing film when you are doing a uh, cinema so when you talk about lighting it is very very important to consider the fact that lighting makes or breaks a film badly lit video a uh, badly lit uh, shots can work if you are not considering quality too much and if you are in uh, area zones where uh, the quality of video might not matter too much but if you really talk about cinema cinema uh, we 
kind of mold our scenes and moods depending on the light. Uh, well seen. If you look at somebody like a Sanjay Leela Bansali, if you look at somebody like uh, uh, Karan Johar, they have such bright setups, such bright shots. Everything is well lit. They live in a shadowless world. But then you look at filmmakers like Quentin Tarantino, Martin Scorsese. You have uh, Indian filmmakers like uh, Anurag Kashyap. You have uh, people who do uh, real life cinema, who do uh, real life things which work with shadows. Lighting is all about not only doing or lighting your setup, but also creating shadows that work for you. So before going ahead, there is some terminology that I want you guys to learn something that will allow you to understand when I talk about the different things related to light. The first thing, your subject, your actor, that is what you light. You light a scene, you light a character in that scene, you light the props in that scene, you might want to add practicals to that scene. I am literally surrounded by light. So I'm going to ask Fianchu who's assisting me today to turn on his camera and I am going to put his camera as a focus camera. Uh, Fianchu, can you turn your camera on so that I can show people, uh, guys, uh, this will be a small screen. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing and then I'm going to ask Fianchu to put this on just to just so that you guys know what I am talking about when I talk about uh, lights that are surrounding me right now. Uh, Fianchu, can you put it landscape, please? And uh, guys, check that out. This is what I am sitting in right now and I'm talking into Fianchu's uh, camera right there. This here on top is my sky panel right there, which is from a brand called Soonwell. It is a massive light that is actually acting as my uh, major key light in this thing. Then we have two lights on the front. Uh, one is from Swift Digital, which makes beautiful cinematic lights. This, these just came into us during the uh, lockdown and these uh, are inbuilt soft lights. You don't, you don't need additional diffusers for them. Then you have something which is a cinematic light here from Lupo. This is actually an sRGB light which does multicolor. There's a light in the back, which is a personal light over here. Uh, this acts as a spotlight for uh, giving me a, a separation on my hair. Well, I don't need separation, but with people and backgrounds, you need to separate people from the background at times. So uh, we are going to be talking about a lot of these lights today, uh, how they are affecting the scene. So imagine me lighting up a Zoom meeting with so many lights and the kind of differentiation it creates. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what happens when I turn one off. Look at the difference that it makes just by turning off one light. Just by turning off one light, the shadows have changed. The lighting has changed. My face is lit in a different way. It is giving you much different mood that it was giving. And as soon as I light it up, it's more brighter. Uh, even though I have burn patches on my forehead that can be taken care of. I'm not considering too much right now because I'm not shooting a film. Uh, and Zoom works on auto aperture, so I can't really uh, uh, manage expectations exposure but look at the quality that changed when i turn it off it becomes darker and you get more gain and more uh bad light if i would call it in my shot because you your the, the the camera is increasing iso to get more light but as soon as i add light it balances out and the sharpness gets better you get better contrast in colors you get better differentiation in colors and that is what light really does it really creates a differentiating factor in whatever you're doing uh, when you are actually working with uh, your camera and working on a film film or uh, lighting for film is all about creating the shadows guys listen to what i'm saying you are creating the shadows that work for your storytelling yes that is what lighting does. Lighting allows you to create the mood of a film. Lighting allows you to create the feel of a scene. Imagine you're doing a, a thriller, a horror film, but everything is well lit. You will never get scared. Darkness relates to horror. 
romance it has to be lit in a mood lighting the lighting has to be soft it can't be harsh light i can't just have sun uh, focused on me and it has to be a very well balanced light so lighting really really makes or breaks your moods makes or breaks your uh, feel to your film and everything and everything that happens around it then so let's get back to what things we need to be considered the first is your subject subject is the character or the scene or the prop that you're lighting camera of course is the camera that you're using it could be your dslr it could be a cinema camera it could be a phone it can be anything light is a light there are different types of light i'm going to tell you what types of lights are and how modifiers work and what kind of modifiers are available diffusion diffusion is used to make light soft for example if i just turn my camera up what you see in front of that light is a diffuser that is diffuser with a grid the grid is creating kind of a spotlight on where i am and not spreading the light too much and the cloth inside the translucent white cloth inside is act is acting as a diffusion and the diffusion really allows me to kind of uh, work towards uh, creating a very soft mood light uh, for my uh presentation and for my scene then you have bounce so bounce is something which is a solid uh, uh basically surface for me the bounce right now is the table the table is a white colored table uh, we have reflectors these reflectors work as bounces as well it has a nice uh, reflector surface here it's a white bounce so if you see my face will change if i just kind of you know modified i have more light here if i remove it the shadow comes back in so this is how bounce works this is how bounce boards work and uh, these could be of different types you can uh, use them differently they do they uh, work as different kind of modifiers that would actually help you modify the light that falls onto your subject and on the scene then you have solids now solids are very tricky solids are surfaces that absorb light the opposite of any reflection is a solid so consider this that if a reflector was something like this which is white if i put a black cloth on it if i add a layer of black on it i am considered uh, converting this into a solid which in turn is absorbing all the light and not reflecting or bouncing it back what it really does it it creates a negative fill it creates a negative light and i uh, usually use these chart papers so if you look at here this is a well lit shot if you look at the camera which i have as a spotlight uh, you see that it's well lit as soon as i bring the black surface uh, close to me and i reflect light through the black surface it creates shadows shadowless shadow and it is not the light it is not the reflector shadow that is it is the light that is being absorbed and not reflecting back on my face if i put open this up and put it underneath me the reflection that was coming from the table would disappear and the the shadows over here will get darker this works beautifully when you're doing food photographs and when you're shooting food because you create texture in food you get shadows in your food especially when you are using windows at light sources if the window is a light source is a big light source and it is bright as hell you will need a a solid on one side to create a negative fill or a negative bounce which will in the end uh, accentuate your uh, uh, basically uh, it will increase the uh, contrast in your image and increase the blacks in your image it will increase the shadows in your image and your images will look more cinematic then of course window when we talk about a window is always a natural uh, source and a doorway is a natural source of light consider this and this is a pro tip that i'm giving if you are in situations where in uh, you are uh, uh, it's kind of uh, uh, working uh, in situations where there is a bright window right next to you where there is a bright light source in the house maybe it's a big window that is falling a lot of light consider putting up a white sheet of cloth in front of it maybe a curtain it could be a bed sheet anything that actually diffuses light and makes it more softer because in the end soft light falling on your subjects is something which will add value and create shadows which are really good to look at
So guys, any questions till now? If you have, please, 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 let's make this more interactive. I'm open to questions. I love answering questions. If something is off the topic, I will ask you to uh, answer. I will answer it towards the end. But if it is on topic, if you guys want to know about something, uh, please ask uh, in the chat box or just say uh, understood or uh, just say yes if you want me to move ahead. So I guess there are no questions. Uh, amazing. Let's go ahead. Uh, we still have a lot to kind of, uh, uh, thanks Naveen, thank you so much. So first you need to understand what are the different types of light that you can work with. With today's day and age with, uh, okay, Akshay, we have a question from Akshay. Uh, oh, we don't have a question from Akshay. Guys, if you have a question and you don't want to type it in, just raise your hand. Uh, I will unmute you and you can ask your questions then. But if the question is related to the current running topic, let's not uh, waste anybody's time because there are a lot of people who are on tight schedules because it's a Saturday and people want to go and party at home. Uh, stay at home guys still. Anyways, so going ahead, uh, we are talking about types of light that are available to you. There was a time when the only lights that we would have were the high heat lights and these lights would go ultra hot. I have burnt my hands so many times. I still have heat marks on my hands because I was uh, <clears throat> playing with the lights or I was moving the lights around without considering how hot they would get. Our actors would sweat their hell out. Their makeup, makeup would flow away. Uh, we had uh, accidents would happen on set where the uh, lights would catch fire. So it was unsafe. It was uh, not something that we would consider. And these lights were usually tungsten lights. These lights were very, very high heat centric lights. They had filament bulbs. They had very, very high quality, but uh, fil filament bulbs that would actually give us a very warm uh, uh, tone to the whole film, a very warm to, uh, tone to your scene, but they were hot lights. Uh, there was the technology, the LED technology that has come now, the technology you guys are born into. And I started, when I started my career, that was 13 years ago, I started in a day and age when the only lights available to me were the uh, halogens, because I was an independent filmmaker with literally no budget. Well, the HMIs and the babies and the uh, multi tens and the, you know, these words which you don't even listen to these days because they don't exist anymore. They don't exist in the digital cinema space anymore. They exist in main cinema because if you're still shooting with directors who are old school, they will tell you to shoot with these lights. They will tell you they want 20 big HMIs to light up a scene because that is the kind of lighting they want to recreate daylight at night and still go shoot, uh, keep on shooting. And people do that a lot. If you're on Instagram and you see these amazing behind the scenes wherein they have like these big, big four, four, five, five feet lights, there's called, those are called HMIs. And those are very, 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 very high intensity lights. And as there was a time when they were hot in intensity lights and they would get so hot that we had to shut our sets down just for them to cool down. And hence the production rate, the production times were much longer and hence uh, things took time. So tungsten lights are very warm in nature. Uh, they can't uh, change uh, color quality, uh, sorry, the, the color temperatures. They are very fixed and they were used to give the more interior and incandescent uh, feel to any scene. And this is also the mode on your camera, the white balance mode on your camera that says tungsten, these lights were synced to that white balance. And I'm going to be talking about white balance also today. Today's session, we are going to be talking about white balance. So don't worry about all the gibberish that I'm talking about. The gibberish will turn into um, uh, sense uh, very soon. So <clears throat> tungsten lights are something which were old school. Very few people use them anymore. And uh, they have all moved to lights which are more and more uh, new age. So HMIs are again, uh, uh, huge, huge, huge sources of light. Uh, there are companies that are making HMIs using LEDs these days, guys. Uh, RE makes uh, HMIs using LEDs. Aputure makes HMIs using L uh, LEDs. Uh, the technology is changing. These are now your new age 
cool HMIs, but there was a time when these massive lights would recreate scenes, especially when you're shooting chroma. Let's say you're shooting Avengers and you're shooting in this big uh, studio, which you really need to light up the studio with uh, whatever you have and however you can use it. You were able to do it with these big lights. You were able to recreate day in an indoor situation just because you were using very, very, very high intensity lights and those were called HMIs. They are, those are still there. Those will never go out of fashion because literally you need that if you are doing productions on very high budgets and you can spend that much. But then you have fluorescent lights. These are lights uh, which are also known in the market as Kinos, Kino flows. So this was the age when these lights were introduced as uh, tube lights. No, these are not the tube lights that flicker at your home, but these are very, very high end, high quality lights where one tube of this light would cost you as close to as 15,000 rupees. And I am not kidding you, Kino Flows, the kit of a Kino Flow lighting, a three light kit would cost you, will burn your bank to about a lakh, lakh and a half easy because these are very, very, very ultra high end, ultra quality lights. Again, Old school. Why? Because the tubes would go off. They also heated up a little bit, not too much, but a little bit. There was mercury in it. They would burn out. You had to change them quite often. Uh, if voltage would fluctuate, they might flicker. So flicker was a very big option. And when digital cinema was created, when digital cinema, cinema came into action and we had companies like Red giving Cinema cameras, which were digital and shooting very, very high quality of up to 8K footage or 4K footage or 6K footage, now even 12K footage with some of the cameras, they actually needed light, which were less flicker, which were high quality, but low flicker. And then was there was the invention of the LED lights. Now, LED panels, what you saw is uh, we were surrounded with now come with different kind of diffusers. Uh, I would ask Fianchu again to uh, turn his camera on and I'm going to stop sharing just to show you personally, physically what these lights are and what are they called. Uh, so my stay sharing is stopped and I am going to spotlight uh, his video. Okay. Can everybody see Fianchu's uh, video? Can you see the setup? Just type a yes in the chat box for confirmation that will help me. Panju, can I get your phone here with me because I will be able to hold it and move around. So guys, uh, the first and foremost, what you see here is like the Kino flows that I showed you. It is a panel uh, by a brand called SWIT, S-W-I-T. See, see the light. If you see, then there is a light behind this light, which is actually a natural light. It is flickering. There is a flicker in the light in the background. But if I just keep this light in focus, there is little literally no flicker and it is ultra soft. It is actually what intensity? This is working only at 6% guys. And this can really light things up for anybody. It's a big, big panel. And what it is doing is literally shining everything to a max extent and uh, really, you know, changing the whole paradigm. Can we get it back down? I don't like to be in so much of light all the time. <laughs> uh, and what you see up here is a much softer light, but a bigger panel. These are soft lights. These are modifiers on top of the lights that create softness. These are also LEDs. The difference between the quality is that in that light, you do not see the LEDs, but here you can actually make out that there are LEDs in between. This over here is called a grid. Grid is used to create spot that to kind of restrict the light from falling anywhere up outside the diaphragm. What do I have here is what looks like a tungsten light, but in actuality is a personal that uh, is creating or replicating what a tungsten is all about. Now what happens in tungsten lights is you can uh, create a spot. You can uh, use the barn doors and create a spot. And what this light really is, I'm going to get it as close to me as possible. Uh, Fianchu, can I ask you to bring it close? And Fianchu, can you uh, convert that light from a spot uh, to something else? So if I just kind of, you know, uh, turn this a little bit here, that's it. Uh, if you see there's a spot that is being created there, we are going to modify it. You see how the light is moving in. So, and what is happening here is the spot is expanding and flowing away. So this has spread out on the wall. If you can see, I'm going to turn it back into a spot again. 
then i'm going to show you how the light really works and how brilliantly it is doing it see how it has turned back into a spot and this is what this light does you can modify it and tungstens used to do this and we used to use things like these personals this personal right here this is a, a a modifier attached inbuilt into the light and this is what the light is about and check this out if i turn this into a uh, uh, wide light the personal is going back in automatically and that is why these lights are mind blowingly amazing and uh, they create some beautiful effects and some beautiful separations to uh, actually produce some beautiful content and all these lights guys really all these lights are flicker free and that is what you need for digital cinema that is what you need to uh, cons uh, like create a cinema that uh, is talking about very very brilliant light quality and very very brilliant uh, uh you know the feel and mood to any situation and uh, these lights really add a value to your production and you need to be very concerned about it. and that is a kind of variety of lights that is available to you and for you guys attending this session today it's a special offer that you guys get to use, use all of these lights on any of the shoot of your choice when i announce the shoot i will add you guys to the batch and of course the inner circle always gets the priority of attending and the other people who are attending uh, the, us uh, with are with us today thank you guys for attending and uh, you guys get an opportunity to kind of experience them uh, practically and in case let's say we are not shooting and you still want to experience any of these lights my uh, studio is open for you guys uh, it is open for all the people who are part of the inner circle and of course the people who attend our workshops so you can come down to the studio uh, and kind of uh, take your hands on uh, onto the uh, lights and maybe use them for a shot uh, see how they work see what difference do they create in terms of quality and everything as well uh anybody wants to ask anything about these lights or anything uh but we can move ahead and uh, we will come back to it later as well i hope i am uh, clear to everybody uh and i'm not going too fast uh sometimes if i don't get uh, responses i have a tendency of going faster because i feel people are getting bored <laughs> am i oh, okay nobody's answering me in the chat box but okay anyways uh everything's perfect hey thanks arun thank you so much so going ahead uh what are the types of light and when i say type of lighting actually not light there are three types of lighting that you need that's it you need to consider only three types of lighting and you don't have to worry about having 20 lights to do it you can do it with one light a bounce board and a reflector okay lucky has a question uh Lucky, do you have a question? I can unmute you. You can ask the question. If you have questions, guys, just raise your hand. Uh, this is an interactive workshop. Don't consider this a webinar. Uh, I will. Uh, yeah, the spotlights are guys. Everything that you see around me is LEDs. I am in a cool setup. The fans are off. I am not sweating even a blink. Even the AC is not running. everything and everything that you see here is leds and they are very warm i can touch them i can feel them uh, uh, and i will not get hurt or and nobody will get hurt on productions okay thanks lucky that's okay uh, so guys types of lighting when i talk about so what we showed you were the type of lights so we had tungsten lights which are warm and hot hmi is warm and hot but massive we have the uh, Two other fluorescent lights, which are also called the brands are called uh, Chimera. The brands are called Kino Flows. Kino Flows are very very expensive lights, and uh, they really burn your bank. But very high quality tube lights. And then of course you have these LED lights. What is the brighter lighting brand? Uh, Aperture or Switch? Both are very different. Uh, I personally love Aperture for one reason is the compatibility and the modifiers that you get with Aperture. Uh unfortunately my Aperture lights are stuck in Bangalore because of the lockdown and I'm really pissed off about it but yeah. Uh but then again if you are talking about cinema and you can spend the amount of money that Swit needs you to spend to get those lights Swit is another brilliant company and guys if you ever want to buy any kind of equipment just let us know we get discounts we don't charge commission to any of the brands hence we ask for discounts for our followers and all our discounts are directly transferred to you guys awesome going ahead three types of lighting that you need to learn by heart and understand 
that is key light fill light and backlight these are the three types of lighting tricks that will allow you to or techniques that will allow you to have your lighting perfect and the combination all three works to create scenes and mind you if I, even if i'm talking about a three light setup all of this can be created by using one light and a bounce board that's it that's all that you need to create good lighting but we will go back to it and i will show you some bit of uh, experimenting with one light as well as we come towards the end of this presentation so what is a key light as the name says it is the main light it is a light that is generally the main source of illumination to any scene you light up a scene using a key light if my if you look at my face right now let's turn all the lights off one by one uh, pianchu can i have all the lights turned off one by one there goes one light you saw the difference in the background there's got another light there's a fill that has changed my key light is still coming from the top my backlight changed now there is no differentiator and suddenly i am in darkness and yet i have something that is falling off from one corner uh, let's turn that off also complete darkness let's turn on the lights and let there be light i am going to turn on my key light first and we have enough light key lights are usually very very high intensity lights that give you a perfect fill for any scene you want to do but since my key light is falling from top it is creating shadows under my nose it is creating shadows under my eyes it has a huge shadow under my neck because i have a big face and a big head what do i do in that case if i am working with one light i add a reflector or a bounce to it and as soon as i put it underneath me because the light is falling from top it takes care of everything underneath my face my eyes my nose where there is lack of light and the shadows are really bright so you have to be very careful when you're using modifiers uh, if i use the silver side of it it is brighter it actually added more light to it and the whole scene is kind of lit up and the camera is being affected by that light as well but if i take it out the scene just went darker the camera over here because it's a laptop camera is modifying light on its own it would be much clearer if we do it on cinema but that happens only in the practical session so when you join us for the practical session we will show you how that works now when we talk about the key light source so your best quality of light and your biggest light source will always be your key light for example if you are working in a situation where you don't have any light source as in external light so you don't have budgets to buy lights or you don't have budgets to actually spend on lighting what do you do then you actually use natural light source and you have the biggest light source available to you that is the sun the sun acts as your biggest key light ever created for mankind and that is actually lighting the whole planet if you consider it and that is what it really does and if you look at it lighting your mountains it lights your trees it lights everything it also creates shadows at different time of the day at different moment of the day it is creating different kind of shadows that is how light is modified and we are going to talk about what the shadows are so some things that you really really need to take care of when you're working with key lights is that you need to avoid placing the light near the camera because the camera uh, the shot will become featureless if i have like for example let's turn the other light on and let's turn let's turn this off look at this the shadows went away from underneath uh, fianchu can i turn that light up please look at that the features are going away the details of texture in my face is going away the shadows are uh, getting missed there is very less shadow uh, that is happening and uh, there is literally no i would say depth to any kind of a sheet there is no mood to the scene anymore it's completely flat lit i am white as hell i'm like a ghost uh, i'm looking like a news channel to you guys and it is no mood at all so when we talk about key light key light needs to be modified in a way where it creates mood let's turn this off and turn this one on over here now it takes a few seconds to turn on these are cinema lights uh, and see 
see the mood that it is creating. So one side of my face is dark and one side of my face is lit up. You get nice dramatic from a news now we're into a storytelling mode and this is coming out to be something which really, really work to, works towards creating a mood for you in cinema. I am working with one light. Uh, can we have a little bit down? And that's pretty much it. I want to take care of these things over here so I can add a reflector right here and take care of the shadows. Look at that. There is That is a shadowed world and this kind of takes care of the shadows depending on where I keep my reflector. Of course, I will keep it away from the scene. I am just holding it myself and just showing you a difference. Now, when you are working with light modifiers, when you are working with light, it has to have dimension, it has to have mood and your key light will always allow you to create mood that works for storytelling. And for that, if you look at it, these are the kind of ways in which you will actually light up your subject. When I showed the key light falling from the front, it was a much flatter light. The shadows disappeared. It didn't have any shadows in my face and there was nothing that was really doing anything about it. The second way is actually butterfly lighting. So what butterfly lighting does is if you just turn that off and I'm going to turn on a small light source, turn it off, please. And let's say, let there be light. Wow. I'm going to reduce the intensity a little bit. Uh, one second. Get it down to approximately 20%. So now, this is a light from uh, the front. It is a much flatter light. It is creating, literally not cre uh, creating any shadows. The shadows are falling behind me. It is a flat face right in front of you. It is really lighting my face. I just take it up a notch. This is at approximately a 45 degree angle. It is creating a shadow right under my nose. This is called butterfly lighting. And advice, if you're ever shooting fashion, if you're shooting women, women look beautiful with butterfly lighting because they have very nice features of nose. Anybody with nice features of nose will always look beautiful when you have butterfly lighting. So these are light that is like right in front, but at an angle so that it creates the shadows falling away from it, but in a straight line. Now, if I take this on an angle, right? If I take this on an angle, what you see here, uh, sorry. Yeah. What you see here is a loop. Uh, I'm going to just come closer to you guys. Right. This was flat, completely flat, completely on the face and everything. This becomes butterfly. Uh, I'm going to stop share. Uh, can you guys see the uh, camera or is it too small for you guys? Should I stop sharing and show it to you guys? Any feedback? Okay. Stop sharing. And so awesome. So uh, if you look at this, this is flat lighting. All my shadows are going behind me. Uh, the camera is uh, reading everything and there is no detail left. I take it up on an angle. Now the shadows fall under. So there's a butterfly that forms here, kind of a butterfly lighting. This is very beauty type lighting. It looks beautiful on women. For men, you have mustaches, avoid it. Then you take it on an, on an angle. When I take it on an angle, see the light that forms here. See how my nose is falling. The light of the, uh, the shadow of the nose from here. Right? So if you see that this place is lit up and there is a shadow that is falling, this is called loop lighting. Why? Because it is a loop, the shadow is falling away. And if I take it more on the side, if anybody can name this light where you see a triangle light here, I'm going to take my specs off for you guys, for you guys to uh, look at it at a better thing. You see a triangle here and can anybody name this lighting? Yes, it is called Rembrandt lighting. And the reason it is called Rembrandt lighting because of a painter who would actually create these triangles on his subject. So if you don't complete the triangle, if you have, let's say the nose falling off here and you have the light really flowing down, this is loop. As soon as you close the loop and you get a triangle right here, it is called Rembrandt lighting. And guys, consider this. I am doing all this with just one light. I take it on the side. This is split lighting. Split lighting is over dramatic. Split lighting is <clears throat> which creates dramatic moods. Downward split creates horror. Upward split creates suspense. Sideward split creates massive drama. So this is what light really does. I'm going to turn my main key light on and let there be light again. 
the whole scene is well lit and we are back in the studio uh now you see that there are shadows that are falling underneath my neck okay uh, i'm going to turn it back on one second i'm going to repeat it let me share the screen again so that you guys have a better idea of the moods that i'm talking about the first kind of light that we showed you guys was a flat lighting which has literally zero mood because there is nothing there to be considered as mood and uh, when i say that i don't want to disrespect anybody or any filmmaker but i we don't live in a shadowless world we don't live in a world that does not have shadows we need to have shadows shadows create mood so the butterfly lighting is lighting done for beauty if you're shooting women if you're shooting actresses for posters if you're shooting uh, fashion films always always try create butterfly lighting because women with all due respect have beautiful features with their nose and uh, features under their eyes that look beautiful when the shadows fall underneath them and of course they have to be soft shadows they can't be harsh shadows to give them a beautiful effect loop lighting is more action oriented it is more uh, realism because your lights lights in a room are placed in a way where they create these loops and uh, these loops are considered to be very action oriented and hence create a mood of action rembrandt lighting is portrait it's all about portrait because rembrandt was a painter who did a specific kind of lighting uh, lighting in his portraits in his paintings and that is what we are imitating right now when it comes to people and when you're doing interviews when you're doing close ups when you're doing shots that have mood in them create rembrandt lighting Sp uh, splits splits work very differently a half split from one side will create drama a half split from the bottom will create horror and a half split from top will create uh, uh, suspense so these are the moods that these lights create and this is all one light setup guys you don't need more than one light to do something like this i hope that is clear awesome going ahead fill light you see how shadows are coming underneath my neck and there are oh yeah lok please ask your question uh, yes please um uh, one second i'm going to unmute you when we take up the question okay uh, hi shitish can you hear me yes 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 okay uh, so uh, when you said five uh, different types of lighting now if i have to inter like uh, mostly in the interviews you were suggesting that we use uh, rembrandt lighting uh, yeah. because, because you're doing create... people because you're doing uh, people you're doing portraits okay but if uh, uh, if i want to use uh, you know uh, if i want to interview a lady can i uh -huh. use uh, uh, butterfly lighting in that of course case? of course so okay, okay. guys there are no rules to this there is no hard and fast rules ki you have to light it in a particular way to create a particular thing it is aesthetic whatever looks beautiful works whatever looks good on your camera and your screen works there are situations why i when i also end up doing butterfly lighting for uh, my male uh, subjects so it is i'm not restricting myself only to females when it comes to butterfly lighting mm -hmm. Okay. so we don't get stuck on the things we have to uh, use modifiers and we have to modify our light to create different moods okay the one more so shite just uh, yeah. um, so uh, this split lighting is broad lighting and short lighting are a part of split lighting or yes broad lighting and short lighting are part of split lighting and broad uh, just to get people to understand broad light is uh, for example uh, just turn the light off and i'm going to show you guys and the very good question look um, I'm glad you asked this because I think I missed putting it in the workshop, and that is the benefit of having uh, people I know personally to ask me these questions. <laughs> so a broad light is, for example, if I'm lighting my subject like this. So you see how this area is dark and this area is well lit. If I face this uh, light, right, this becomes my broad light. My most of my face is well lit right now. Correct. This, this is, is short. This is broad light. Uh, this one is short. One second. Wait a second. i might be wrong at that you're right yeah this is this is broad yeah broad and short correct thanks lok again 
So, no, because I rarely do broad and short. We are more uh, focused on lighting. Thank you so much yeah. for but, rectifying. But it. So, in yeah. film, I've realized that people are generally yeah. not. This is mostly mostly used for portraits. I mean, Portrait. exactly. That is why we don't uh, like. That is what my colleague is also saying right now. Is the reason that we've not used it in the presentation is because this is used for photography more than it is used for uh, film. Yeah. Uh, okay. My Thank colleague you. just mentioned it. Thanks, Lok. Thank you so much. and i learned a new thing today thank you <laughs> it's always fun learning and uh, for me i really consider even after 13 years of working in the industry i really love learning every day so coming back to what we were talking about what how does a fill now work is uh, basically uh, ek second this pulkit has a question so is it important to shoot with three key lighting as sense no 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 okay uh, key light is always one you can't have more than one key light because that is your main source of light you have only one sunlight like only one sun and that is your main light source all the other things that you do are fill and backlights there are different modes of lighting that are considered so uh, you would have uh, three lights to light up a scene based on different things that what we are going to talk about uh, i'm first going to under make you understand what lights are and then tell you how to use all three so when we talk about creating uh, cinematics uh, and uh, when coming to the fill light the first was the key this for me the top lighting that i have here is my key light it is giving most of me the i am lit up by that light but i have shadows i have shadows underneath my neck so what i'm going to do is i'm going to turn my fill light on over here and what that fill light is going to do is it is going to kill the shadows see how the shadows have disappeared from one side of my face they're still there on the other side but they they're still here but on this side which is facing the light the shadows got killed and they're moving away i don't want to remove the shadows i just want to reduce them i want to reduce the intensity of those shadows so that they do not take the person away from it so let's reduce it and let's have only enough this and let's make the light warm because i have a warm light source from here and uh, well, that's too warm let's take it away a notch and that's pretty much it so right now this is a balanced light source if you would see the difference uh, i'm going to turn the sharing off again and see the difference in my camera uh, let's turn the fill off you see how the shadow appeared uh, over here in this area let's turn the fill on and you see how the shadow disappeared if i just have the fill light what will it make a difference look at that now there are more shadows uh, the key lights gone the key light that was lighting everything there are more darker areas on my body it is more dramatic but if i had put my key light on again it is less dramatic but still has the texture and everything away so fill lights are basically reducing the shadows that are falling off and shadows that are uh, uh falling uh, on your subject that this, uh, this only adds elements and when you if you see if i move my hand if there is movement there's a shadow falling in the back all this just adds dimension i can modify it more i can take it i'd let's turn this as off as a fill light and uh, let's take the bigger light as a fill light now what that did is it took away the shadow that was falling in the back and uh, gave me another shadow that came about here but took care of everything else it took care of all the other textures on my uh, body it taking care of my details coming out of my body but also take uh, considering the uh, taking the light uh, sorry giving the light into the shadow areas giving you more detail because that the area under my neck was dark it wasn't as clear or visible but with the fill light at an angle of about 45 degrees really adds value to it and because i put it on 45 degrees because of my specs my specs otherwise will reflect light so if it's at an angle if it's a particular way that it does it it really adds value so the fill light is used to reduce the intensity of shadows that are there inside your scene when you light up your subject and depending on the mood that you light up your subject it will add value to your scene and add texture and drama to it so it removes the shadows created by the key light because every light source will create a shadow we do not live in a shadowless world guys uh, consider this fact because i have seen people who spend hours just to remove all the shadows and they say shadow nahi aani chahiye shadows falling off the neck shadows falling off the eyes but the fact is 
you need shadows to get realism the sun creates shadows your the sunlight creates shadows you walking on the street you have shadows uh, light sources coming from outside the windows everything creates shadows so it is very easy to uh, manage shadows but a shadowless world does not exist and especially when you're working with reflective surfaces god help you you will not be able to do it backlight what is backlight backlight is something that acts as a separator or is acts as a light that allows your a subject to be separated from the background for me the personal over here is a backlight can you place it like a backlight please can you take it back and point it towards my neck and can you turn it on and create it into a spot thoda sa idhar karke aur idhar turn kar do so uh i am going to show you guys uh so that is the backlight falling on the background but i'm going to put it on me rather than a background create a nice light here can you point it towards on my shoulder you see how the backlight is creating a separator on my headphones when it falls onto my head so put it on my headphones light there right there that is how the backlight is working i'm going to move a little ahead uh then have the light so the light does not fall off so there are bandos that are uh, like if i just turn this towards that so there are bandos i'm going to stop sharing again this is tricky when you're working on webinars so there are bandos that can actually allow can you open the bandor see how the light spreads all over my head for now close the bandor it reduces the light reduces and creates a rim behind me and if i uh, can you just open the personal for it to kind of fall off and in uh, create a uh, spot and uh, widen it up is it opening right or closing and there's are a feller so this is now actually expanding see how the light expanded behind me and it's creating a nice differentiator and backlights look beautiful and backlights really add a layer of separation i am now away from the background backlights can be thrown onto your subject or away from your subject can you throw it on the background so when thrown on a background it really adds an element of a texture on the background i can add things to the backlight and really create a uh, mood lighting and if i turn everything off uh, can i turn that off as well now this is a silhouette kind of a mood can you throw it on me and that's pretty much it so this acts kind of a split but if you close the barn door and cut light now this is actually acting as a rim in the background falling little bit off onto my skin and not more than this i act my key light to it now that the backlight is only acting as a separator separating my headphones from the background and of course everything else on my face is lit by my key light so you have three kinds of lights the key light the fill light to take care of the shadows and the backlight to really take care of the separator uh especially guys this is useful especially when you have a uh, a person with hair i'm not that fortunate but somebody with hair a model your subject and you have dark backgrounds when people with hair are uh, made to sit in front of uh, dark backgrounds they tend to uh be merged into the background they tend to get merged into the uh, the uh, the blackness of the shadows of the background and hence you need separators to light them up you need backlights to really create a uh, lighting you uh, to create a lighting that is a uh, little bit on the side of cinema because cinema needs that three space lighting if you don't have such a source look for uh, natural light sources you could place a lamp in the background I don't have three lights, but I have one light, a reflector. I can actually add a lamp in the background as a what we call as a natural or as a <clears throat> practical light in the background, which will add uh, basically a separator or an element of texture uh, to the whole thing. uh so let's talk about intensities uh i have a very nice question coming to me the, should the intensity of the backlight be uh, more uh, than the key light no key light if it the key light is at 100% your fill would be at somewhere between 50 and 60 and your backlight would actually be at 30 40 or 20% backlight is only there to accentuate your uh, subject's outline and kind of uh 
put more focus on your subject than the things around them. So that is how the intensity of lights work and that is how lights should be modified. So when we talk about secondary lighting systems, when you add light to it, you can use backlights in different, different uh, ways. One, you can act um, you, uh, like you have the fill light coming from the front. You can have it as a kicker rim or an edge light, which would just light up the side, not the full face, but the side on the back of your face, uh, which I can actually show you guys. Uh, if you uh, just move that light around on me. And let's turn, uh, ten, bring the light intensity down. So that is at, by the way, that is at 1%. So if you look at the light, how it is falling on my face, let's uh, cut it, little go back, bring it in, little more in, and I'm gonna stop sharing. So the light that is falling onto me right now, yeah, that's it. Hold it there. This is acting as a fill light because most of my face is well lit. Reduce the intensity of that light, please. Uh, one percent up so it is at one percent these are lights are very powerful and the camera is not actually managing it well for me but just to give you an idea since it is falling on my nose it is covering my face it is actually acting as a fill light when i increase my fill light it is going to be much more balanced and uh considered considering the fact that i'm adding more light everything is kind of burning up as well but if i take the light a little behind can you cut more light when I cut my light, that's it. When I cut my light, now it is falling on my headphones. It is falling somewhere here. Bring it back in a little bit. That's it. It's falling here. It is not falling on my nose. It is not falling underneath uh, on my cheeks or underneath my neck. What it is really creating is, uh, can I please switch off the light? Of course we can. This is the switched off light now. Okay, let's only consider uh, the side light and imagine that there is a key light. This right now is what we call as the rim light or a kicker or an edge light because it is not actually lighting up my full face. Can you bring the light more in? So this here now, since the light is falling off onto my nose, it is falling off my cheek is kind of a split light kind of a feel. And if I just add a reflector here to the light and you will see that the difference, what kind of a difference has really created. So even with just the backlight and uh, uh, a reflector, I can create a modifier uh, and I can create light through and throughout. If I cut it back, let's take it back a little bit. More back, please. That's it, that acts as a kicker because it is not falling off onto my nose. That is the biggest thing, it is not actually covering my nose, it's just falling a little bit off onto my nose. The most uh, thing is here, this acts as a kicker. Can you cut it back more? That's it. This right now is falling from here. If you see the light here, when I put my hand here, so it is a rim light. I don't have enough distance uh, for it to fall from right behind me, but that is what uh, is also a rim light. And that is also uh, what we can do uh, in terms of uh, a cutter. So it, it is cutting the background. Put it onto my head and just uh, raise the height. Uh, Okay, and uh, yeah, that's it. This acts as a hair light because it is kind of just lighting up my head. I don't have hair to call it hair light, but it's more of a head light for me. And that is what is actually again acting as a separator. It was a bat light. And when I just put it on the background, let's just put it on the background. It creates a silhouette. I get a nice halo behind me, but it's more of a silhouette now. This is what is called a background light. And especially when you want to create textures, when you want to do product photography and uh, Fianchu is really increasing the uh, spread of the light for me. So the whole background is being lit. This allows you to create moods that are different and that act differently. Right now, I am kind of like a halo kind of a feel to it. And if I just add a fill, so this is the fill coming from an angle. This works as a brilliant light. I have a nice separator in the back, a nice fill falling onto me that is acting as a key light for me right now because that is the highest in intensity of light that I have. And then when I turn my key light on, so the whole lighting changes and it looks something like this. And let's bring the bright. Oh, that's it. That's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. so. Now it's a very well lit scene where my background is lit, my face is lit, my shadows are being taken. Care of. But again, this is not a shadowless world. And yes, uh, Pulkit, a three, uh, three light, not a three key lighting, but a three light setup will always add drama and uh, 
a kind of a texture to your scene, a kind of a texture on your subject, because when we are lighting our subjects, that is what uh, we are essentially doing when we are doing lighting. Okay, when we, okay, there's another thing that I want to show you guys. Uh, can I turn that off? So if I turn that off, this acts as a practical. Do you see the light over here? This acts as a practical. I'm going to turn this off also and just have that in the background. That is acting as a practical light. It's actually a lamp. It is not a cinema light. It does not create too much of a difference. But when I turn my uh, fill light on, uh, which is actually my new key light at an angle, uh, what it is essentially doing is the backlight is adding a texture to my scene and also acting as a separator uh, to the whole uh, theme of uh, stuff. I can point it at me or I can point it away to kind of give it a feel that I want. So any questions you guys have till date, uh, till now? Uh, okay, reflectors. Uh, There's a very, very nice question by Prashita that uh, uh, if, you're on, uh, if you're working with just two lights and we're using the third uh, as a uh, reflector as a third, Reflector is always a fill. So you have a light as a key light. You have a light that has acts as a backlight. The third, which will actually kill the shadows is your fill. And you will always use the reflector as a fill. Look at the difference. Shadow, removing shadows. We have shadow and we are removing shadows. So this is a two light setup right now. And this was the right time when you asked me this question. And uh, look at how it is actually giving a nice fill. So the fill is being created by the reflector because this is acting as a bounce board or a bounce uh, reflector for me and it is giving me a nice light a nice fill light here on the shadows the backlight is a practical which is not making too much of a difference but giving enough light for people to know that there is a background there's a table in the background and the main light is one big light source that I have right here so this becomes a 2.1 lighting system and two and a half lighting system whatever you want to call it that works brilliantly to create drama and texture to your scenes any questions that we have till now or should I just uh, bounce ahead and uh, I hope I'm not going too fast for people to understand what I'm saying. I do have a tendency of going fast when I don't get responses so bear with me. In travel filmmaking, how many lights are enough in order to carry less? This is enough. This about is enough for travel filmmaking and I love this light when it comes to travel filmmaking. What it does is it works brilliantly in any kind of situation. I'm going to turn all the lights off. Now, this is almost a situation where I am working without light and I can create any kind of mood lighting with this. Adding a reflector to it will actually add uh, more value to whatever I am doing and create light for me. This is actually working only on 20% intensity, guys. This is, uh, I'm going to show you, sorry, I'm going to stop sharing again. I keep forgetting to do that. So this small light, this uh, small beast light here is, is an aperture uh, MC LED. I've used it so many times in my live sessions when I uh, started uh, shooting uh, uh, in the lockdown. So this is all I need. If I'm doing a vlog, this is the kind of light I would create. I would add the reflector here. So if you look at my hand, how my hand is working as a reflector. So maybe add a reflector here to kind of create that uh, fill. This works as my key. What I really love about this light is the uh, kind of feel uh, that it creates uh, with the effects that it does. And that is why I keep t uh, telling people that you need to have a light that is versatile. So if I want to do imitate cop cars, if I want to do imitate uh, something that helps me create mood, uh, this is lightning, that was pulse, this is TV. I, I'm shoot, I imagine as if this is a TV scene going on right here and uh, see how the light is changing as, as if it would really be a TV uh, show running in front of me and uh, I don't really need a TV to do it. Uh, I'm traveling and I don't want to create uh, basically uh, kind of a fire, real fire. Let's put this here. Look at that. Imagine that. That is fire right there. It is beautifully done. And the light, the quality of light that these gives. Guys, the most important thing that you would consider actually when you're dealing with light is the quality of light. I can create mood. Um, I love doing this workshop like this because it gives me that warm, cozy feeling as if I'm in the mountains and there is no corona around me and it's fun and I'm doing it over a a fireplace and talking to you guys. It is one of those evenings where you would chill with your friends and do lighting. So that is a kind of mood and feel that I can create.
create with something that I have here, uh, which allows me to basically create a mood, create something that really adds value to my production and adds value to my scenes. So even a one light, when you talk about lighting, works brilliantly to create anything. And I love the haunts that pop up here. So again, you, it's up to you how you want to use your lights. It's up to you how you want to use your resources. You want to play with everything, how, how you want to play with your shots. Uh, this is fire. Uh, this is like colors changing right now. You want to create a party scene. You want to uh, work with, uh, this is like lightning here. You want to create drama. You want to create horror kind of a feel. This is TV. You want to uh, do a scene with the TV. So this is fireworks. I mean, you want to consider uh, developing what fireworks look like. This is what fireworks. Uh, imagine look at films, movies, where you have fireworks uh, sound in the background and this color keeps changing uh, on your subject and they look beautiful. And that is not created by real fireworks because uh, kind of applying real fireworks to any situation would actually need a lot of resources and a lot of time. So uh, share some example of blocking light and what situation and mood. Um, we are going to be talking about setups. Uh, definitely, uh, let's. We are heading towards that. Don't worry, look. We will. We still have forty minutes to finish. I uh, extend my workshops a little bit, so we will consider. In a film, how to maintain the same mood? Ah, that is important. How do you say maintain the same mood when it comes to lighting films? Uh, it is all about having the correct uh, settings and mood boards. Every scene needs to be finished at the same location. One location will be lit up in a particular way. A situation and a mood of a scene will be lit up in a particular way. And mood boards need to be created to be considered when you're doing all of this because those mood boards would add value to whatever you are doing, would add value and make it easier for you to change setups and change lighting situations. Uh, Aryan, this one costs approximately, I think, 9,500 to about 10K. It's an expensive light, but it's a flicker free LED. And uh, I can shoot slow mo's using this, by the way. Uh, I'm just one second. Let me just share the screen again. And by the way, the lights that I'm working on right now, my key light is at 2% intensity. My fill light is at 1% intensity. My backlight is at 1% intensity. So imagine the quality of light and the quantity of light that I'm playing with right now and what I can light up in terms of a scene when we are talking about all of this. Uh, how to know what uh, about the lighting setup is perfect? It's all aesthetic. Like I said, it is what you love. It is what you feel. There is no right and wrong. I mean, Karan Johar likes it lit up. Uh, Sanjeev Lila Bansali likes it lit up. Uh, uh, Anurag Kashyap likes it natural. Right, the, uh, the Anurag Kashyap likes, uh, likes shadows. Uh, Sanjilila Bansali does not like shadows. He likes it brightly lit and and uh, overextending everything. So there is no such thing as a perfect light setup. It is what you like and what your preferences are. And when you're uh, actually working on the script, when you're in pre-production uh, uh, phase of your film, and when you're considering all of that, you have to consider the fact that uh, you will be uh, creating mood boards and these mood boards are something that will allow you to decide what your different scenes should look like, how should, how should they be lit and what are the kind of lighting situation that you would be creating for different mood boards. Then we come to a very, very important thing. We come to color temperature. Guys, any questions till now? I'm going to take a 10 second break. My mouth start hurting now. <laughs> If you guys want to take a one minute break, just say yes. I uh, want to get up, move around a little bit. It's been over one and a half hours we've been sitting. So otherwise I can just continue. I, I've been sitting since 4 p.m. today. It's crazy. I did a workshop right uh, before this and I'm continuing into this. So it's been a crazy weekend for me. Um, but yeah, uh, if you guys want to uh, continue, just say yes. Or if you want to break off a minute, uh, you want to loop break or something, just uh, say break and we'll break for two minutes. Yes, no, maybe. <laughs> 
okay <laughs> we have some yes sure sir uh, so, guys i'm going to take just a 2 minute break i'm going to give my jaw a rest for 2 minutes it's been it started hurting and we'll join back again in 2 minutes and give your eyes a rest you've been looking at the screen for the last one and a half hours uh, let's just give it a rest for 2 minutes All right, guys. I am back, and uh, where are you guys? I, I, I. Cool. If you guys are back, just say yes, and we'll continue. And uh, we are heading towards some more technical side of lighting, and uh, some more uh, technical side of everything. Uh, we have. Uh, does anybody have any questions still now? Anything that you guys want to ask? okay let's continue so we are talking about color temperatures so light as the as you know and if you've ever turned uh, changed bulbs at home you would know that uh, every bulb or every type of light has a different color temperature has a different feel and every temperature reading really creates a different kind of mood to your scene for example if i want to show romance it has to be warm it can't be cool because cool is a form of depression you would do blue if you were doing repression if you uh, if you were showing romance you would want it warm so your lighting will change and this is a whole new theory there's a color theory that we do it's a different workshop altogether where you really manage light colors with the real colors uh, in a film but if you're talking about uh, colors in terms of uh, intensity the color in terms of what they measured they were measured in a term called kelvins so colors are always measured in kelvins and of course this is very very technical things and you guys might not use it much in future but you need to understand how kelvins really work so kelvins how kelvins really work is the temperature and the kind of feel the light will start giving when it's placed at that temperature at 1700 kelvins you would actually imitate or uh, replicate a light that is uh, a, a light coming out from a flame light coming out from a matchstick because a matchstick has a lot of yellow and a warm on it i'm going to turn off all my lights and we're going to play with only uh, one light and we're going to keep changing its color can you just turn that off and change the color of this light over here uh so you see right now it what kelvins it is at this is uh, this is the least that it goes is it niche ja raha hai uh so at 2800 it is a much more warmer tone please increase it 
And when you increase the Kelvin, it goes into a much whiter and a much more bluer tone to it. So at 1700 uh, Kelvin, towards 1700 Kelvins, uh, 1850 to 1700, you will get uh, candlelight colors. But when the lights come on, they hit about 2700 to uh, 3300 Kelvins. This is incandescent or tungsten lighting. This imitates tungsten lighting. At 4500, it imitates fluorescent lamps that is the kino flows and the kino lights of the world and of course at 5000 and 6500 kelvins it will imitate daylight so when we talk about daylight it is actually 5000 to 6500 kelvins and when you talk about moonlight which is much more bluer it's about 8000 kelvins and there are some lights which are called moonlights there are moon panels like there are sky panels which are used to imitate uh, night in the day so there are scenes, if you have seen the movie Baby, there is a scene in the movie Baby, which is a desert scene, wherein our subjects are in the desert, but they're trying to show night. That is where when they wanted to light up the subjects, they were using moonlight panels to light up the subjects, even if it was being shot in the day, because the Kelvins of night and the Kelvins of daylight are very close between 6,500 and 8,000 Kelvins. And that is how they imitate daylight to moonlight lighting. And it is very, very uh, easy to understand. Lower the number, the warmer it go. Higher the number, the cooler it will become and more towards daylight it will go. Uh, sun and sunlight is not always very warm. If you look at sun, it is warm only in its golden hours. It is warm only either early in the morning or late towards the evening when it's a golden hour. That is the only time it's warm. But on the all the other times, it is a whitish tone to it. It's a bright daylight. That is why it's called daylight. It's a much more whitish tone. Now, this right now is throwing what Kelvin's it is at? 10K, 2%. This is over daylight, uh, clear blue power. So you see how blue everything is. I'm already wearing blue. My background is blue. My camera is trying to adjust and make it warmer because Zoom has a tendency to give a warmer tone to your scenes, but uh, it is not able to do it. Let's take it towards warm. Let's get it to about 5,500 uh, or 6,000 Kelvins. So at 6,000 or 6,500 Kelvins, this is imitating daylight. See how my skin tone is back. Take it back to 8, uh, 10,000, please. You see how my skin tone is more paler. I look dull. I'm going to stop sharing and for you guys to understand what I'm really talking about over here. At uh, approximately 10,000 Kelvins, let's take you to 10,000 Kelvins. My skin tone is not that you know uh, good. There is a uh, light in the back. Let's turn that off also because that is quite warm for us. Uh, guys, we're facing minor technical hiccup. Uh, the actually our, uh, the inverters failed. We've not had light for a very long time today, but we were running on inverters. But if you look at uh, Fianchu's uh, camera, I'm back there. Uh, that is why I always have a backup with me. Um, just by second, uh, if you guys can just wait on for a second. Uh, yeah, video stuck because uh, the light went off and my internet just uh, coughed off. If you guys can see me on Fianchu's camera, I'm going to be uh, turning everything else on as well. Yes, you guys can see me on uh, Fianchu's camera. Amazing. Just give me two minutes. I'm coming back on to mine as well. My internet's back on. Uh, I, this is a problem these days. Uh, we get a lot of power failures here, uh, but we have enough backups to run. We've switched our backup to another backup. Uh, you know, I have about four inverters running in this uh, and four power boosters running because uh, I have to kind of
pull all my systems. Each system is on uh, inverter. And let's start this again. Uh, can you guys hear me on this for now? Till the time everything boots up again, if you have any questions, just please ask. Uh, We're still rebooting my uh, Zoom session on my system. Yep, and let's boot it up. Any questions still? Anybody wants to know about something? Anybody wants to ask about anything? Just feel free to ask. We still have two minutes before everything does uh, turns on. What distance to maintain between source and subject? See, uh, it's again, it's very subjective, but uh, if you're using bigger panels, uh, three to four feet is a bare minimum. Uh, don't get closer than that, because if you get closer than that, you will start creating hotspots on your subject. You will start creating uh, hotspots on your uh, uh, subject space, subject's uh, body, and uh, everything else. Uh, we got locked off again. And I am, yeah, I'm back. Sorry, uh, sorry about that. Uh, so when uh, Mayank's got a good question, how much of color grading uh, will actually uh, help uh, in uh, converting warmer light to cooler tone? If you're shooting higher bit rates, you can do anything with it. If you're shooting, let's say, 10-bit footage or 12-bit uh, footage, that means a higher quality of footage or higher information of footage. It's like JPEG versus RAW. If you're shooting RAW, you will be able to literally fix anything in lighting. But if you have an overcast in your uh, a, a color cast uh, in your uh, uh, film, if there is a color uh, that is being added, that cannot be cut. For example, if you're shooting weddings and you have a lot of red in tones uh, running in your weddings, it is the worst kind of lighting that you can deal with. It is the worst kind of lighting that would actually affect your uh, film and affect your quality of whatever you're doing. So again, coming back to what I was talking about. Uh, so we are at, uh, what Kelvins are we at over here? So this is about 10,000 Kelvins, which is white. And if you see my skin is, uh, the zoom is actually trying to adjust it. I'm going to turn the big light off. It's more bluer now. I'm already wearing blue. My background is all blue. So uh, there is a like much more whiter and a bluer tone to it. Let's get it out to about 6,500, please. And reduce the intensity also. It's too bright. Uh, one more. Uh, that's pretty much it. So when you look at 6500, 6500 is a daylight overcast wherein you want to imitate that you're outside in the day, but you have clouds around you. You have clouds that are affecting the uh, color of your light and uh, the, the the kind of light that you're getting now is much more softer and much more warmer, but uh, it still has that blue tint to it. Then if you take it down to 6,000 or fifth, let's do it 5,500. 5,500 is what we call as vertical lighting. This is when the sun is vertically pointing towards you and it is throwing light on you. So it's much more on a warmer tone and it has gone, uh, gone down to a, a much more warmer skin. My skin is more yellower and more uh, pushed upon as a skin tone. It's still burning because the intensity of the light is a lot and uh, the zoom cameras, I can't manage my sh uh, shutter aperture or anything. It automatically adjusts lights. But uh, you can see the color tones are changing. The color separations are there. Now the blue of my clothes is not uh, merging into the background. The background is not merging into my head. And a lot of things are being managed. I bring it now to 5,000. This is a uh, horizon daylight. This is uh, what we call as the golden hour imitation. It is much more on the golden side, much more on the 
uh, warmer side of things and much more on uh, the 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 warm tones and much more on romantic tones this is what romance is shot on then we go down more to about 4000 more warm but imagine that guys this is actually moonlight this is very close to moonlight uh, because uh, in reality moon is the right light reflected it looks white to us but there are days when it looks yellow as well and that is the actual light it is reflecting because it is reflecting the uh, light that the sun hits through the earth and the whole process and the jing bang of the science that happens uh, and it is actually yellow it's not actually white that is why on a full moon night you get that yellow moon and this is what this is imitating this is imitating a yellow moon night then if you get to go down to about 2700 to 3300 now this is incandescent or this is tungsten lighting this is much more warmer it is like the hot lights that used to happen in cinema before everything is much more yellowish in tone your skin tones are yellow or your blues are being cut and everything is being managed separately on a different tangent and if I go even down than 1700, which these lights can't really go because this is the limit at which lights can be brought down. The limit is tungsten to approximately daylight. That is what your lights will always vary from a tungsten light to a daylight. And this is a chart that I will, uh, guys, I will share all these slides with you. So don't worry about taking screenshots or anything. Um, I will share all of this data. You can download these uh, slides as well and it will help you kind of, you know, remember what light to use. Well. Can I get that back to about 5,500 because I don't like it too warm. Um, so 5,000 or four, yeah, 5,000 is good. This, I, like, I like this more, there's a nice blue tone to it and everything. One second, I'm going to turn my chat on as well. Yeah. I hope I'm clear to you guys, yeah, because I'm not getting any chat. Uh, it's either I, I, I don't get chats um, uh, when uh, uh, I am actually uh, either I'm not clear to people or people are not understanding anything. So if you are understanding, just say yes, uh, and I will move ahead. Amazing. I really like the intelligent audience that we have today. But guys, don't hesitate if you have questions. Just talk on your thing uh, that how light works in different situations. And uh, you guys must be wondering, okay, you've understood how, what kind of lighting is there? What type of lights are there? What are the color temperatures that are used? But how do you actually apply it? How do you apply light setups? How do you make sure that whatever you're shooting is actually working for you? So we will discuss these light setups now. First is your natural lighting. Natural light, you're the biggest light source in the world or in this planet is the sun. Sun gives you some amazing light. So you have different times of the day. You have different times when you can use the natural light at your uh, at your uh, kind of uh, what is what is salvage, salvageable at different times of day so uh, you have the golden hour in the morning and your golden hour in the evening which gives you nice warm tones but the day gives you nice whiter tones and that allows you to shoot in that manner you use bounce cards when i say bounce card these are reflectors or bounce boards to kind of manage that natural light and create another fill coming in from direction and when you're out in the sun always carry reflectors always carry diffusers you know in film setups they actually add skimmers so skimmers are huge pieces of cloth they're like massive pieces of cloth that come together and they make the light the sunlight softer a uh, softer light source because sunlight at times can also become uh, harsh and can also ruin the whole lighting for you so a natural light source is a single light source and that really works for you in that manner. Key light or a single light setup like I showed you before, you need a separator as well. What you see in the scene on the right is actually in the background you have or as a separator is a natural light source that is there. It could be a street light if you're shooting in the outdoors. If you're shooting indoors, it could be a lamp kept in the background. I have a blue strip running in my back that also acts as a separator. So you need a, a single light or large light of source, but you need to add Thing. So you avoid placing your key light near the camera because light will become flat and featureless. You need to place it away. It has to be at an angle because you have to imitate how sun falls on you if you're outdoors or how the moon falls on you if you're outdoors. If you're indoors, how light fixtures fall on you, how uh, you have windows at light sources, uh, how you will actually illuminate a room. 
you have to consider that no rooms have flat lighting uh, 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 not everybody has cove lighting in their houses even with cove lighting the biggest problem is they fall from the top and they're more topish lighting and they create shadows underneath your eyes right and the key light is always your primary source of this so this has to be the most highest in intensity light that you have imagine you're in a situation where you have a lot of natural light sources like a tube light or a lamp uh, or anything and your camera is managing the flicker that comes through them because th those are not flicker free leds so what you really do in that case is uh, you imitate how a real light would fall if there are tube lights you put your light from top because tube lights are usually on top but if there are wall mounted lights like lamps you put it on a direction uh, coming in from a direction or if it imitates a window it has to be a bigger light source uh, flat on the side imitating a window and you need to add reflectors to kind of act as a fill light so key light is always used with bounce boards always used with uh, fill boards until unless you are actually using another light source when you come to a two light uh, setup and or a three point lighting right we had discussed before in a three point lighting setup you need to have a key light or we've already discussed it the key light acts as your main light that is giving lighting the whole subject the fill light is something that is killing the shadows it is managing shadows created by the key light and of course there is a backlight that actually separates your uh, subject away from the background and if you look at the image that is being shown how the differentiation occurs if you're what creating drama use one light as a key light let's turn everything off let's just uh, uh, use one light source this just turns into more dramatic this is a single light source that i'm getting i have nice shadows coming in so this is a single light setup i add a fill to it sorry i uh one second one second yeah so now i have a fill light also coming from a different direction uh, can you turn the fill off this is a fill off so you see there is shadows you turn the fill on and as soon as the uh, fill uh, turns on, you see how the light has started appearing here. The features are coming out more. So the, uh, the two-point lighting system works like this. And as soon as I turn my third light on, now, which now becomes my major fill light, it also adds light to my background. And now I'm lit up all well from all sides. So when you're lighting your subject, even for dramatic situations, you will be able to light them in a very good way if you utilize all three lights. And this is what Pulkit was asking. Can uh, the, Do we need three lights to create drama? No. You do not need all three lights to create drama you can do it with one light only but if you want to balance light especially in situations when you are taking interviews or in situations when you're doing portraits you need to have something as an element to kind of separate your subject from the background and so on and so forth and similarly in film cinematic uh, things you need to add hair light uh, separators from the background because that is what is really changing the whole scenario talking about high key light high key light is when you add too many lights to your subject and uh, shoot everything blown out. Uh, your subject is blown out. Your backgrounds are blown out. They're, uh, they're dominated by more white tones. Uh, high key happens when you're using lights and daylight together. If you're mixing light and daylight, it is uh, very positive lighting. Apple in their most of their videos uh, uses uh, high key lights or uh, where they blow up the whites in the background and your subjects are in focus and it's a nice uh, you know a nice cool tone to it but at the same time it's like daylight and uh, it, it works uh, like a fill and creates you know a heavenly like feeling whenever people want to imitate heaven they kind of uh, light it up really well I and mean, when they want to imitate hell they make it darker so similarly this high key lights is when you add too many lights to a scene not I'm not saying too many but I had enough lights to really blow out your background and add enough light on your subject so that it sustains the background and the subject as well low key light this is where the drama happens and i love this let's create a low key light let's turn our big lights off and let's reduce the intensity of this light over here and turn this one off this is low key light this is more dramatic see how drama is falling off onto my face i am actually getting a reflection in the background let's cut the background a little bit let's close the barn door on the right and let's move the light towards the left and just turn it more towards your right that's pretty much that's it that's it that's it see how the mood change uh, can we increase the intensity by one percent this is low key lighting uh, i still have a lot of fall off in the background because i'm not too far away from the background uh, if i'm far away from the background i can avoid it but that fall off in the background is actually acting as a separator which is decently well done i'm lighting because this is mood this lighting is drama 
Uh, yes, please, look, please uh, ask your questions. Just one second. Let me unmute you. Uh, yeah, please. Uh, yeah, Shatid. So uh, I was uh, asking that in the movies, uh, when you mentioned three, uh, you know, light setup, and you just gave example of high key and low key also. Now, there are times when the subjects are moving here and there. And uh, I'm sure lights would also not move along with, uh, you know, so that's not why you, you recommended that, you know, interviews and portrait can be shot with those three lighting. So can we say, can we say that uh, those are for like stationary things or unless you have a very big setup where, you know, huge lights are there like sun. So, uh, I mean, I was curious to ask and that's why this question. Okay. When we talk, when we talk about cinema, it's a good question. Thank you for the question. And uh, when we talk about cinema and when uh, people light up cinema, so these are big fixtures. These are always big fixtures because your subjects will move. But remember, the lights will never move with the subjects. So your shadows will change and that is natural. If you look at Indian television and you look at, uh, when I say Indian television, I'm talking about your star plus and your Z uh, TVs of this world uh, right now. And you look at that, you get literally shadowless areas. Everything is very well lit. Uh, people move from one place. Now, those are fixed lights as well. Those set have, uh, sets have fixed lights and everything. But cinema works on a more natural format where the light fixtures that are used imitate a real world situation where if you're sitting in a room with one light source as a bulb, the light source will cast a shadow in uh, your uh, uh, darker areas. It will cast a shadows in the uh, minus areas of the light. And it will be natural when you move from one end to the other, the shadow will transform, the shadow will get modified. It will move uh, with you and that is very very natural uh, when people light up scenes they do create natural sources they could imitate windows they could imitate uh, large sources of light like the sun uh, they could also imitate small sources of light wherein they need to then add practicals a lot of scenes that are uh, when i talk about practical practical was the light i had in the background so when i'm not going to turn it on again because that is why the trip happened uh, uh, yeah, let's turn that on if we can. Yeah, so see uh, this this light over here, if it would have been in my scene and there was a light there, it would have acted as a practical. Uh, but when I talk about practical, it's very natural lamps or in a room or it could be a bulb uh, or a lava lamp or anything that acts as natural. And look at Hollywood. Hollywood works around that and even Bollywood now is working around it where you will have a key light which is not visible to you, but it imitates a bigger light source. And then you have small, small lights around the room which are lighting up the darker areas. And that is how cinema is lit. But again, it depends on the mood, depends on your resources. You can modify it. There is no right or wrong way to do it. It's just how well you can cinematically light it. Right now, I love the lighting that is happening right now. I, I really love uh, what is uh, happening. Uh, Yes, yes, the recording will be available uh, for you guys. Uh, post this and uh, for the inner circle, it's going to stay there for <laughs> for when at, uh, whatever time they are members and uh, for everybody else for about two weeks. Oops, sorry, my bad. Ah. So from the low key light, we come down to... Uh, Fill lighting, so fill lighting is like we had uh, discovered, is actually used to remove shadows. And let's say I have a lot of shadows now, I'm gonna turn my fill light on. This is my key light right here. I'm gonna fill, uh, turn my fill light on. This became my key actually, because this is actually much brighter. It's at 1%, but it's still better. Let's turn that off and make that as my fill. Uh, turn that towards me and uh, let's kill the shadows that are here. Uh, so can we reduce the intensity of that? Uh, maybe add a diffuser to it. Uh, right now, this is without a diffuser, but still, let it be. That works. So this now is actually adding a nice rim in the side of my face uh, when I talk about uh, rim, uh, rim lighting. So turn that off. This is a dramatic lighting, single source of light, uh, what, what you see on your screen. And uh, this light is falling from one uh, key light that I call it, and I'm turning my backlight on. As soon as I turn my backlight on, I get a nice rim here. So it is taking care of all these things. Let's make that warmer so that the lights are much more balanced. 
and reduce the intensity please that's pretty much it so see how now it's a different feel to it it's 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 actually the 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 it's still a harsh rim because we don't have a diffuser in front of that light i would uh, personally like to add a diffuser to that light uh, but since we don't that's okay uh, we will manage without we'll act uh, make it use uh, like a rim light uh, or let's let's try a diffuser as well so this now this light is uh, with a diffuser see how the light changed it's much more softer now it's a nice soft uh, fill to it it's nice a uh, nice soft fill uh, remove the uh, diffuser please when i reduce diffusion it's much harsher it's much brighter put the diffusion back in much softer and now it is acting as a this is without diffusion with diffusion without diffusion with diffusion the fit diffusion is of course always better so you need modifiers to have great light you need modifiers that add very beautiful light to uh, your scenes and uh, what i have as a modifier here is just paper uh, it's just this paper right here is just a uh, general butter paper uh, or a graph paper that we call it or a grade paper and an architect's paper this is what it is it's much tougher than your normal butter paper but uh, it's brilliant as a diffuser and this is how the uh, age was and they used to use these with uh, those hot lights and they would actually burn up and catch fire at times so fill lights are important they are put in places uh, where you have uh, shadows uh, that are affecting your scene they are put in places which have uh, elements of darkness and they are removing textures they are removing details so we need to add lights to get those details back because when a camera captures light that is uh, actually the lack of when a camera captures lack of light it is basically uh, losing out on data because it is not capturing anything and in the end losing out on detail as well and that is that cannot be uh, fixed in post guys you will only increase gain and you will increase the uh, grain in your footage if you do that backlit shots are very dramatic i love uh, backlit shots uh, they are mood changers especially let's say if you're in a forest and the light is falling through the trees uh, it just works brilliantly that lighting works really really mind blowingly and uh, see we grew up in a day and age when people used to tell us that uh, please do not shoot against the light well it's not the case you do shoot against the light you do uh, uh, use backlights uh, to create drama you do uh, uh, use backlights to create a texture you can add color through a backlight like for example i have a really really cool looking light over here this is actually a wristband for a light again this is also a flicker free cinematic led and what it comes with is a magnet it sticks on surfaces this can actually act as a bright uh, backlight i'm going to make it brighter and i'm going to like uh, fianchu just hold it behind me so see how now there's a texture there is, there is a light behind me that is act giving texture to the scene uh, just look at this guys i'm going to show uh, stop sharing and show you guys again so without the light this is without the light so it's dull the, the it's dark now as soon as i add a backlight to it or just put it behind me uh, put it right behind me please uh, right here aa ja gaya ja so here see you see how what is the kind of texture it is giving now this is a backlit shot i'm actually add throwing light from behind me onto myself and it is actually creating a halo kind of a feel to it it is cre creating a dimension which is actually adding value to my production and uh, really you know the mood has changed uh, turn it off and now turn it back on again the mood really changes and this is what actually adds value to your production and acts value to whatever you do so this is how different kind of lights work and different kind of moods are changed when you're using a uh, cinematic lighting so your colors you can change colors uh, you can add colors so you backlights usually work uh, you can uh, if you're in a day day and as, uh, if, especially in foggy situation it works well so like i was saying about practical lights look at this this is a practical light the scene is being lit up by something else but there is a globe on every table that globe is part of your set that globe is part of that room the globe is part of the design uh and uh, the globe is something that really really works for you so that is actually a practical which does not look odd when it comes to uh 
you know, uh, creating light. The fall on his face from the globe is the practical light that is falling on the face. So practical lights are lights that are part of the set, but also help in illuminating the subject, illuminating the scene and creating uh, a nice, uh, you know, uh, effect of using these lights which works brilliantly. The cost of the band that I was using, uh, that was an RGB band. This is a warmer tone band. And this what I have is an RGB band. <laughs> and uh, you guys, I mean, this is fun. I love using these lights a lot uh, in a lot of things that I do. Uh, there was a film called Karma. The only two lights that we used in Karma was the MC LED and this. This was used as the film and the MC LED was used as a key light. I will share that film with you. Most of the film is in red light because red denotes... Uh, uh, horror and this is what we use and what I really like about this light is this this also has the different modes can we turn that off so I can actually you know imitate things just by using this small light uh, this costs about three three and a half thousand rupees it actually is not uh, directly available in India but the import does not cost you too much um, and it is easily shipped within a few days this imitates fire this is fire right now the uh, this is uh, basically, uh, you know, how uh, fireworks work, color changes. This is fireworks, by the way. Sorry, that wasn't fireworks. That was just uh, bright TV light. This is fireworks. This is party light. This is color changes. Of course, cop light. And there are times I put this in front of my car and just roam around the streets. I'm kidding. Don't do that. You'll get into trouble. And of course, uh, I love this bit. I love the fire feel that this gives. And it gives a nice mood to the whole scene and how the mood changes with whatever lights we add. Let's, can we have the light back on, please? So this small wristband of a light only costs about three, three and a half thousand. And this, by the way, is cinema grade flicker free LED and works brilliantly and is charged and it is water resistant. Guys, this is not waterproof, but it is water resistant and for waterproof lighting we have something over here i don't know if it, this is charged or oh, it is this right here uh, this small beast of a light right here is a light uh, what i call as lytra and i'm gonna oh, i'm gonna just uh, turn the intensity down a bit guys these guys make some powerful leds man this is such a small light this is just this big it's a very very small light and this one is an expensive light. This cost about 12,000 rupees and uh, the amount of light it gives is just mind-blowingly amazing. And let's, oops, sorry, my bad. Look at that. This is zero. This is at 5%, 10%, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50. And I think it's reached 45. This is just a small teeny bit of an LED that works brilliant. This one is literally too expensive. This one, this is a light drop probe, by the way. This is a 100% waterproof uh, LED and you can throw it in the water and nothing will happen to it. Any questions you guys have till now? Uh, is no, I, that's the perfect question, man. No, it's not because you have to imitate a uh, hard light as well. Hard light is used when you uh, create drama. Hard light is when you want to create situations that imitate a uh, new uh, dimensions to a scene. So the hard lights can be used. It's not always uh, necessary to use soft lights. Uh, dramatic lights are hard lights. Uh, whether these lights are called spiffy, this is spiffy gears uh, band. This one right here is a Lytra. Then I have another light here. I have so many lights, man. This is this is a Loom Cube. Uh, it also acts as a flashlight. Uh, I love this light. This is again a waterproof light. It's a small cube. It is uh, all these lights. By the way, this one comes with a magnet. It's got a magnet inbuilt, and it's a brilliant light. Uh, considering that, and of course, this is the Aperture MC LED right here, and the big ones are Swit and uh, Soonwell, and of course, Lupo. You've got about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven brands of LEDs uh, with us right here. And you guys get an opportunity to try all of them post whenever you guys want. You could just book a time and whenever it's safe for you guys to go out. 
so when you are actually creating harsh lights is uh, basically let's say you are in a situation when there's a bomb blast or you're in a situation when you are showing a heavenly light falling onto you you are in a situation when uh, you are uh, imitating anger and you- and you are in a situation with exactly what fianchu saying you're imitating god so you would get hard lights god does give you hardships anyway so hard light is something that would fall onto your subject and create that drama for you uh, these are lights uh, that don't use diffusers uh, and then again if you use uh, soft lighting soft lighting creates softer moods happier moods hard light is uh, tough action uh, drama Uh, soft is love romance uh, happy so that is the kind of mood that you would be creating using different kind of lighting situations and of course using different kind of modifiers you can uh, imitate lights in outdoor situation you have to really consider the time of day or you could have even an overcast uh, when you are shooting look at the scene that is on the screen it's actually an overcast used with reflectors the one of the reflector is visible in his specs right there uh, which is actually uh, falling onto your uh, subject and creating a light and really killing the shadows bounce lights like we discussed in the beginning um, an overall fill is created when you bounce lights for example let me turn everything off i'm going to bounce one light uh, which is the highest light i have uh fancy can we turn everything off first and i'm going to stop sharing for you guys to see this uh, because bounce light is my easy to go to light when i don't want to light my scenes too much i just uh, use i bounce the light inside a room on the roof uh, if you're doing vlogs this is the kind of lighting i would recommend because then you don't have to worry about too much see how there is a natural light fill that has come into the room and i'm lit up in a very flatter tone this is what it is uh, bounce lights create much more flatter tones to your uh, think there is still a shadow being created because there's a big light source here uh, other than this uh, this is uh, like how you see how the room is well lit now i am also uh, lit the room is also lit uh, the sh- there are softer shadows because everything the whole light pattern is being uh, bounced off on the from the roof and it is falling onto me uh, and uh, it is creating a fill light so bounce lights are mostly fill lights that you would uh, create your lighting with that's the standard of i use it only in my fast forward situations corporate shoots i usually bounce because if you can, um, i'll show it on the screen as well uh, because what happens is you don't get time to put on three point lighting system so we end up doing uh, bounce lighting uh, most of the cases because we get uh, nicely lit up uh, areas in uh, offices and that kind of helps us as well so bounce light works when you want to really create and fill ambience a uh, fill light uh, as an overall light but you lose drama because it is much more flatter you lose texture in your lighting and uh, that's pretty much it of course side lights uh like you see the lamp on his side is also falling off on your subject this is also called a chiaroscuro lighting uh basically what it is it is a natural uh light source that is available inside a room that will create a a kind of a feel uh, on your subject which allows you to create a mood it's just an element added to separate the background to tell people where you are and how you use it uh, it uh, it is used as a highlighter on your subject and the only problem with this is uh, if not diffuse they do create uh, shadows and they actually add contrast to your shots why because they uh, will create shadows on the opposite direction it will create shadows towards your key light this is not the key light the key light is the key light light that is subject uh, is uh, lighting most of my subject but this light is acting as a uh, as a separator from the side like for example this falling from now if i remove this this acts as a side light it's much harsher it's creating much more uh, shadows but if i put it back on uh, this is what uh, i'm going to sh- uh, stop sharing so right now right now this is acting as a fill light right now it is acting as a back fill light but if i remove the diffuser it becomes harsher it becomes more side light and it is creating shadows and this is used uh, when we imitate lamps when we imitate lights inside a room and make them uh, much brighter than a key light and they stand out and they make the subject stand out as well
motivated light is something that is deliberately put into scenes to make scenes look very very dramatic uh, they uh, they are uh, actually used uh, to you know look like natural sources but people would understand that they are not as natural as they look because uh, you would add fog to it you would add uh, a lot of uh, elements to it to create the drama and uh, motivated lighting really works for drama motivated lighting really add a, a very very nice element or a layer to your uh, scenes and which actually allows you to kind of uh, uh, um, create that drama that you want to create otherwise and the last and the final thing is ambient lighting ambient lighting is imitating the day or the time of the day uh that uh is uh, actually you are trying to imitate the time of the day that you're trying to shoot in and you know there are scenes in which you so like for example this here can also be considered ambient light because you see it leaking into the scene matlab you must be thinking in your head if you didn't know that there is a light you must be thinking in your head that there is a lamp or there is something in this room that is uh, throwing this light and because it is a room uh, you would consider it to be a natural source and that acts as an ambient light uh, when we shoot like for example in anurag kashyap uh, incident i would say he uses tube lights with kino flows a lot because uh, he likes to uh, naturally light his uh, uh subjects and uh, his scenes and that is what the ambient light is all about and it creates an ambience which relates to the ambience for example if i add uh, if i let's say make it a dramatic scene let's turn this off right now it's a little bit more dramatic and now i say that uh, i want to give it a feel that i am uh, let's say uh, in the hills i am sitting inside a room where there is a fireplace this now is ambient lighting this will tell you i have lights i have a backlight i have a key light this falling from here is an ambient light that is creating the ambience i'm going to stop sharing and show you guys this so without the light is natural light it's just light you have a backlight that is a nice soft here you have a key light coming from here as soon as i add this now this creates an ambience look at the shadow in the back look at the flicker that is happening it is the mood that is being created imagine i'm we're shooting a scene in which i am like you know in a, in a mood and i'm talking to you guys like this maybe it's a godfather father kind of a feel to it and this light is falling from here and you would think okay he's sitting in a place where is a nice uh, fireplace on the side and you could even do an establishing shot uh, of the room where you show that fireplace and then you turn off the fire put that light there because you can't have that fire on throughout your scene it is very hard to maintain and you use these kind of lights to really create the ambiance of everything that is happening in that scene so that actually finished my presentation <laughs> and uh, if you guys have any questions just throw them right now and we will take them up. okay what uh, light are you uh, talking about oh, the band light name of the band light is this is piffy is this piffy right look at that s p i f f y it's called the spiffy lumi if you can look at this is the rgb bracelet uh, the spiffy lumi and it's amazingly uh, uh, well done and it's only for about 3 3 1/2000 including shipping or excluding shipping i am not too sure but yeah it's available on the website and and you can only get it through the website guys any more questions we're already at 10 minutes ahead of time uh overtime actually uh some movies to suggest lighting ah oh, this is brilliant i love uh, watching so watch alfred hitchcock movies they work brilliantly for light uh, there's a movie called birds by alfred hitchcock which i personally like lighting in that movie was amazing it's not a black and white film it's a color film uh grand budapest hotel guys definitely watch grand budapest hotel and you will understand how light works with color because that is one movie that really plays with both uh, color and in lighting then you have um, blade runner the the blade runner the 20 something blade runner, the latest blade runner 
beautiful when it comes to lighting uh, if you are into web series gotham is amazing if you want to really really understand cinematic lighting uh, in the indian web series uh, i would ask you guys to watch uh, something like uh, arya that's the sushmita sen series uh, amazing cinematic lights they've used natural light sources and practicals a lot in that uh, web series so these are the some movies i'm going to uh, curate a list for you guys that you need to do with the uh, scenes uh, references for lights and definitely share it on the blog on the app uh, very soon so yeah uh, which you are picking up in the future and it's chance for collaboration Oh yeah, Mayank. Uh, talking about collaborations, yes, we are heading towards a uh, web series, uh, India's first hundred percent collaborative web series. We will be talking to a lot of people, uh, pan India, because there are scenes being shot in every city of India, and we will be traveling with a small unit, a tiny unit, to every city and the uh, uh, shoot a film. Uh, but that is still. Uh, I'm, I'm waiting for Corona to end and be safe for people to travel and things to happen. but yeah we will be collaborating on that matter with a lot of people but there's a catch only the inner circle gets to collaborate on that project i cannot allow uh, anybody else to collaborate because the inner circle has the uh, privilege of working with us uh, on such projects and if you guys want to know i've been talking about the inner circle too much and there are three questions asking what is the inner circle <laughs> all about uh, just give me one second i'll just show you what the inner circle is about and why am i so proud of it because a lot of members here uh, in this workshop today uh, belong to the inner circle can the inner circle guys just say hi to everybody else uh, and it would be fun just to see how many inner circle people are here today and the best bit the best privilege my inner circle folks get is uh, i give them the priority of, over anybody else uh, in terms of uh, doing projects uh, so we have pulkit mayank shubham akshay uh, joining us we had lok lok was also uh, in a circle we had um, uh, prateek who's uh, in a circle uh, and uh, with saket who's in a circle of course uh, lok is here still here awesome lok is back i thought you left uh, thank you guys for being uh, just preet is so thank you guys for being the inner circle for me uh, and the inner circle is very very uh, you know a private thing for us wherein i am trying to create an extended uh, team for myself wherein we will definitely uh, be collaborating uh, for a world cinema fest and uh, that will happen very soon as well uh, just to show you guys what the inner circle is all about one second uh, and guys uh, inner circle is by invitation only even if you buy it i will do a swot analysis with you and if i feel that you're not fit for the inner circle you will be asked to leave and you will be refunded uh, and that has happened too but i think about 23 applications already i'm sorry i have to be very clear about it uh so this is what the inner circle is if you go on to the app so the inner circle is a one to one mentorship program where you get to work with me uh personally i hand hold you throughout uh, you have the privilege of uh, asking me out any time and uh, talking about collaboration uh, any kind of production support you guys want from me the best bit which i love doing this for the inner circle is you get access to everything and every anything that we are doing in terms of classes because when we uh, go to content you have everything here you have uh, all the uh, premium cheat sheets and you have all the workshops available to you there are about 10 workshops that are already there i'm adding more tonight uh, which are the latest workshops that are there the inner circle gets free access to all the pre recorded or post recording workshops and plus live workshops like today uh, the inner circle did not have to pay for the workshop today they got access to it and uh, the core value at about 1499 is per month what they pay they get uh, something worth about 50k a month and then i can guarantee you that uh, so again you guys are welcome to apply uh, and uh, yeah so uh, again uh, so uh, guys thank you for joining in if you don't have questions uh, i will close but i'm still here for another uh, 13 minutes uh, i'm here till 8:30 i've been actually talking for almost four and a half hours now and um, 
I've been up since 4 a.m. We've been shooting for Vivo today. We were in CP, then at India Gate. Uh, tomorrow morning, again, it's a 4 a.m. call time. I'm going to be out again. Uh, we're shooting for Vivo X50. We have the X50 with us. My team is out right now as we talk. They're already shooting. We're, of course, uh, taking all our safety and uh, wearing gloves and uh, wearing masks while doing it. So please be safe when you go out. Avoiding crowded places is very, very important. And just be safe. Uh, we're, we even have PPE kits if needed. So we have are ready for literally everything and if you guys uh, guys by the way if any of you need PPE kits let me know we've got this very special rate from one dealer and uh, it literally costs a dirt and it's amazing it's an amazing PPE kit if you are considering to go out and shoot uh, use PPE kits they will save you thank uh, Prashita thank you so much uh, uh, I will uh, add you guys to the batch on the app. Please join the app. Uh, I will add you guys to the batch on the app. The uh, batch will carry the recording of the session and the PPT uh, for you guys. Uh, for the inner circle, it goes on permanently. For uh, 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 the guests, it is actually a temporary thing. It will be there for at least two to three weeks uh, until unless I forget deleting it. Uh, <laughs> but it's still going to be there and yeah. Uh, Sir Vaget, yes, you have an opportunity to work with us uh, once things work out. Uh, once it is safe for me to ask you guys to travel and come to me, uh, we will uh, start shooting again. Uh, there are about four short films, one web series, one full web series actually. Uh, and uh, and by the way, the web series, uh, uh, the privilege for the web series uh, is goes to the students, the full time students that we have. We have a full time course as well. It's a 45 day theory course, and then a 20 day practical course post theory that would cost somewhere about 25,000 rupees in total, which was originally costing about 60k at one point in time. And uh, Fianchu, who's actually an ex student, is literally uh, swearing at me right now because he's the one who paid full. But the benefit he gets, he gets a permanent job. Uh, post that uh, the web series uh, is for our students and uh, yeah amazing server give we will definitely get in touch and the app will allow you to stay in touch with us and of course uh, uh, whatsapp uh, if you guys uh, have anything my whatsapp number is with you guys and there is a helpline number on the whatsapp also uh, which is a private line which nobody else has access to other than me uh, I will. I'm just gonna share that number with you guys. Uh, it's nine three double one seven triple one zero eight. So this is the number right here. Uh, no, uh, Sanpreet, uh, this is the number nine three double one seven triple one zero eight. Uh, just add this. This is a private line. Uh, meant for uh, shoot guru uh, members and uh, shoot guru app members uh, which uh, has access direct access to me and nobody else but me reads it so uh, thank you guys thank you spending your saturday evening with me and uh, i hope you do you guys don't party too much tonight it's uh, saturday night uh, everybody's at home safe and sound and no no clubbing happening uh, so yeah I hope this was a uh, worthwhile uh, engagement and uh, you guys liked what we did. If you did, uh, please, please, please drop a review.